DualSource.tech gets updated multiple times a day with a variety of tech products. So if you guys live in the US, UK and Canada and want to save money on your next purchase, consider bookmarking DealSource.tech and checking back at least once a day. Vega is finally here and it's aimed to compete against the GTX 1070 and 1080. This is the current pricing for the GPUs. The Vega 64 by itself starts at $499, while the 54 starts at $399. AMD also introduced Radeon packs, which gives you some pretty cool discounts on gear. So the two cars that I have here for comparison are the Vega 56 and the Vega 64 liquid cool version, which actually costs $200 more than the air cool version. It's also combined with their Radeon Aqua pack. Unfortunately, that is the only way you'll be able to buy this right now. So here's what you get in the Radeon pack. You get $200 off a FreeSync enabled monitor, $100 off select Ryzen 7 CPU and motherboard combos, and two free games. If you don't care about the games or don't need to upgrade your monitor, then the Aqua pack is simply not worth it. However, if you're gonna make use of the entire $420 savings, then go for it. You guys spend an extra $100 on the pack and save $420, netting you $320 worth of savings. Alright, so the main difference between the air-cooled and the liquid-cooled Vega 64 cards are the clock speeds, the single point performance, and of course the power consumption. It's also a lot cooler and quieter than the air-cooled version. My buddy Kyle from Bitwit reported his air-cooled 64 hitting 85 degrees on full load compared to only 64 on my liquid-cooled version. Alright, so I will be comparing these two GPUs against the ASUS Strix GTX 1070 and the 1080 since those are the cards that they are competing with. Unfortunately, I don't have the Founders Edition on hand, so I decided to stick with the same brand GPU to keep things more consistent. This is the test bed that I ended up using, so without wasting any more time, let's dive right into the benchmarks. Alright, so we got some interesting numbers. The GTX 1080 did better in most of the games with the Vega 64 right behind it. There were even some games that the Vega 64 scored better, like on Battlefield 1, Doom on Vulcan, and even Division by Tom Clancy. However, the 1080 did end up winning with a total of 64 frames more than Vega 64. The Vega 56 did have some trouble keeping up with the GTX 1070 as well. You guys can blame optimization for the time being, but with the current drivers, the GTX 1070 is the clear winner in pure raw performance over the Vega 56 air-cooled card. However, when we take a look at frames per dollar, it's pretty obvious that the RX Vega 56 gives you the most bang for your buck, coming in a little over 2 frames per dollar, followed closely by the GTX 1070. The Vega 64 liquid cooled version did horribly in terms of value. If only it didn't cost $200 more than the air cooled version, it would have been a much better value over the 1080 with a total of 2.1 frames per dollar, assuming the performance is the same as the liquid cooled version. Alright, so in conclusion, the clear winner here is obviously the 1080 in terms of raw power. But if you guys want to get the most out of your money and only have about $400 to spend on your next GPU, the Vega 56 is the obvious choice. I'm sure if you guys give AMD some time for optimizations and driver updates, the two Vega cards will perform a lot faster, just like we saw with their previous RX 500 series. 
I will be doing a follow up video and comparing all the new AMD cards starting from the RX 550 and up against Nvidia's lineup starting from the GTX 1050. So if you guys are excited for that, drop a like in the video. But until then, I'll drop a link to all the GPUs featured in this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.